This video is just a quick overview of how to use Microsoft Fabric to train ML models using Jupyter Notebooks. And the way I'm going to do this is to start with a local notebook where I'm doing the training on my local system with a local CSV file, and then kind of move that into Fabric and see what the difference is between the two experiences. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is do this in my local system with Anaconda on the left, and then I'll do this with Fabric on the right. And when I use Anaconda, I kind of like to use VS Code. So I'm going to launch Visual Studio Code from Anaconda. And let me make that bigger. And what I'm going to do is uh, the data I'm going to use, um, let me look at that first, is this data. So this is a relatively small set data set. These are all the SpaceX launches. And what I want to do is um, develop a model to predict whether a launch is going to be successful or not. So they have a column that's outcome. So it, it tells us kind of true or false, the the uh, the launch was successful using some of these other variables. And I already have a notebook that does this, so I'm not really going to do a tutorial on how to build the model, but I'm gonna show you the model and just build it and then move it into Fabric and we'll see the difference. So I'm gonna open this notebook that I previously had and um, it pretty basic um, logistic regression model building. So I have uh, some import statements. I pull in some data. Notice I'm pulling this from a um, a document or a CSV file I have in Blob Storage on Azure, and then I'm just transforming some columns, doing some data wrangling stuff, and then uh, finally um, uh, I'm doing a, a regression training using a grid search. I'm looking at the output and, and the accuracy, and then plotting a confusion matrix. So it's pretty pretty basic model development, um, and I just want to focus on the mechanics of actually doing the build. So um, I'm just going to run all of these cells, and we can see what we get. So we can see each of these are running, and there's some some output along the way, and then in the end we get a model that's built, and this is the performance of the model, and I draw a confusion matrix on the bottom. So pretty easy, pretty easy stuff. Um, so now I would like to do this in Fabric instead. So how would I do that? Um, so I'll just kind of put this aside, put this aside, and let me get into my Fabric account. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select the data science workspace from here. So this gives me the data science experience. And I am going to go and look at my workspace. And this looks good. I have a lake house called Crab Shack. And this looks good. So the first thing I'm going to do is upload that data file from, I have, a, I have a copy of it on my desktop. I'm going to upload it into the lake house. So let me go over here and select that file. So here's my CSV file, open, upload. And it's a very small file. So, I mean, I just want to focus on the mechanics, not, not try to stress test the system. So here's my file. I have it within the files folder of the Crab Shack Lake House. That looks great. And the next step, I want to upload the notebook. I don't want to write it from scratch. So I'll go to the, the home icon here. There's an import notebook icon. And similar to uploading the CSV file, I can upload my Jupyter notebook. And that'll import that and go to workspace. That looks great. And I'll click on that notebook I just uploaded. And this looks very similar. Um, it's not in dark mode, but um, otherwise it's very, very similar. Um, so we have the, the same imports. I'm not really going to change much of anything here. So I have the same imports. I do need to change where I get the file from because that's now in the lake house. And then the rest of these steps are just standard panda stuff. And um, I can plot the matrix and do everything else. So to get the data in, uh, the first thing I do is on the left hand side, I have to associate the notebook with a lake house. So let me click add existing lake house. I only have the one crab shack. I'll click add. And over here in the file navigator, I can see that's the file that I had before. So this is the import statement I had before. I'm actually going to, yeah, let me just remove that. And Microsoft has some Nice little wizards on here that'll write some code for me. Uh, that is actually below where it should be. So let me move that cell up. And then DF, yep, DF, that's what I called in my data frame as well. So that'll read it in and display 
Um, I actually really just want to use the head function in pandas instead, so I'll make a little tweak there. But otherwise, it's just going to read the CSV from Lake Falls default files, and then the SpaceX Falcon 9 launches CSV, which is that file there. So let's go ahead and here, let me collapse that. And I will just do the same thing as before. I'll run all the cells. Um, this will take a, just a few seconds to spin up because it has to get a Spark cluster uh, running and submit this job to it. Here I can see it's printing out my data frames. Now it's doing, it's doing my grid search. And my grid shirts is done, my performance, and then my confusion matrix. So, so that's it. That's um, pretty easy. Uh, the experience is almost exactly the same. The difference is now I have it in the cloud, so I can use data from the cloud that could be much larger than this, obviously. And if I'm working on a team, my entire team that has access to the workspace, um, they could see this as well, and I could integrate this with other applications, which I couldn't really do on my desktop. So. Um, hope that was interesting, or at least you learned something from it. I'll see you next time.